Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle, which is really cool. Three unit squares are inscribed in a circle as shown. Find the radius of the circle. So we have three squares, basically, and they are unit squares, so side length is one. We're looking for the smallest circle that, that could uh, cover them, okay, like this. So the smallest circle that contains the three unit squares. At this point, you may just want to pause the video and try this problem yourself first. Okay, let's get started. Now, as always, I'm going to be making some connections. So let me go ahead and extend the side length here. And there's one thing that uh, to note here, that the center of the circle is going to be where it is, because if you notice that it's actually the circle uh, has uh, three squares in it, right? If you look at the line that goes through the middle, it makes sense if the center is below uh, the bottom of the top square because uh, because of the lengths. Look, look how uh, the single square is, how close it is to the circle as opposed to the two squares, right? Okay, so you can tell about where it would be located even if we didn't mark it down. Let's go ahead and connect here this one and then we'll make one more and that'll be this one right here okay awesome so now we're ready to solve the problem the plan is to use the Pythagorean theorem of course right but how do we go about that well we know that the side length is one so this is going to be one we don't know this piece so let's call that little piece h there I could also call the other one h doesn't really matter here and then this will be 1 minus h, and this will be the radius r. This whole thing will also be the radius r here, and this will be 1, and this will be 1 half. From symmetry, obviously, this needs to be the midpoint. Okay? All right, so what we can do now is we can actually write down the relationships and try to solve for r. All right, let's proceed. So my first relationship is going to look like this. I'm going to be using this triangle here and use the Pythagorean theorem, obviously. So it's going to look like this. 1 plus h squared plus 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth, is equal to r squared. Notice that from this point to that point, it's going to be the radius of the circle. So it's very important while solving these puzzles, you got to pick a point that is on the circle and then connect it to the center so that you can actually use the radius for that length. Okay. For, for example, if you pick this length here, uh, it wouldn't make sense because that would not be the radius. Okay? Awesome. Since those points are not on the circle. That's my first relationship. And let's go ahead and write the second one. And second one is going to be coming from here. And that's going to look like 1 minus h squared plus 1, which we know the side length of one of the squares, right, is equal to r squared. Awesome. Now, I got two relationships, and they both give me r squared, which means that if two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal. All right? Let's say that one more time. If two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal. So I can safely say that 1 plus h squared plus 1 fourth is the same as 1 minus h quantity squared plus 1. Beautiful. Now, we can go ahead and take advantage of the fact that we, if we subtract this expression from its counterpart, we're going to get 4 times a times b. So that's going to give us 4h. So we get 4h here. And if we subtract 1 fourth from the 1, we'll get 3 fourths. And if we divide both sides by 4 or multiply by 1 fourth, we'll get h equals 3 over 16. Awesome. Our goal was not to find h. But we did, and we're going to use it now to solve for r. Now, could we find r directly? Well, for that one, we would have to isolate h in one of the equations and substitute into the second one. Yes, we could do that. For example, from the first equation, I can actually isolate the h as r squared minus 1 fourth, and then square root both sides. Obviously, we're going to be getting two values here, but let's go with the positive one because 1 plus h needs to be a positive value, right? So I'm going to assume that this needs to be a positive. 
And then what I can do is I can actually subtract one from both sides and then this way I'll be getting h in terms of r. And if I plug that into the second equation, which gives me one minus this expression here, the radical, right? Of course, this is one minus h, so it's gonna be one minus that plus one, right? And then that will be squared and then you'll add the one and that'll equal r, r squared. So that's going to complicate things. Why? Because we have to deal with radicals. Now it's gonna be very smooth. So I don't recommend that you follow this method, but if you wanted to, you could. Okay, so now we know that h is equal to 3 over 16. I can go ahead and plug it into one of these equations. It doesn't matter which one because both of them are going to give you the same answer. So it's a matter of choice. Which one do you want to go by? I'm going to pick the second one. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in, replace h with 3 over 16. Okay, squared plus 1 over 4, and that needs to equal r squared. Right? Oops, that shouldn't be a one fourth, that should be one. All right, so one minus h squared plus one is equal to r squared. Cool. Now, one minus three sixteenths is going to be 13 over 16. If you square that and add one, you should get r squared. So let's go ahead and simplify the left hand side. So we'll get r squared is equal to one over 169 over 256 plus one. And that should be simplified as if you add 256 and 169, you should be getting 425 over 256. And since we're going to square root both sides, we might as well just factor this expression here. 425 is 5 times 85, right? And 85 is 5 times 17, so this would be 25 times 17, in other words. And that's good because... We can just go ahead and square root it now, and it'll be easier when we know how it's factored. Okay, if you square root 25 over 256, that should give you 5 over 16. And if you multiply that by square root of 17, you should get it, be getting the following result. Okay, and this makes sense because this number is pretty close to fourth, um, if you estimated the square root of 17 as 4-ish, and then that would be 20 over 16 which simplifies as 5 fourths. So this number is pretty close to 5 fourths. And you can tell from here that the actually the radius is going to be slightly larger than one because it's the hypotenuse of a triangle whose leg is one. So that makes sense. Okay, we just wanted to check the reasonableness, even though we didn't need to, because for this problem, for this problem, you do not need to check it. Uh, we didn't get a quadratic, so there is no uh, doubt that our answer is actually valid. So this is... The answer, that's the radius of the circle that encompasses three unit squares. This is the smallest circle that does that. And that will be our answer. Okay. Well, thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, let me know. If you did, also let me know. Share with me what you think. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.